This screencast is on the periodic table. Let's take a look at an atom first. On the left here is a lithium atom. In the center are protons and neutrons, and around the outside are electrons. Protons are positively charged subatomic particles. Neutrons are neutral charged subatomic particles, and then electrons are negatively charged subatomic particles. When you take a look at the periodic table, which we are here to talk about today, you'll see that the first thing, every element has a number associated with it. Lithium happens to have number three, and that repre represents the number of protons in its nucleus. So, when we look at this diagram of the lithium atom, there will always be three, one, two, three, we'll say that the red ones here are the three protons, yet there may be three or more neutrons. And the average number or the average weighted average of the protons and neutrons combined gives us the atomic weight. So let's move on to the next slide. Here I have some notes from the periodic table we'll talk about in just a moment. All of the elements are set up similar. You have the symbol here, which is in the bold letters. You have the name of the element on the bottom, which is a little bit different than the periodic table that's in the front cover of your book. And then you have the atomic weight or atomic mass. And these asterisks I'll explain later. And then you have this number on the upper right, which we talked about before, are the number of protons or the atomic number. And each of these is distinct for every element. So here's the periodic table of elements, a nice color table. And we'll explain how we arrive at all of this information. First, we'll break the table down into black and white, and you'll note that the elements are numbered from 1 to 118. That means each one of these elements, again, has a distinct number of protons, and that's what defines it as an element. On the left here are periods 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. A period is a row. So period 1 is row 1. Period 5 is row 5. And we'll explain the significance of periods as we move along. On the top here, we have groups. Note that there is the 1a symbol, 2a, then it goes to 3a all the way to 8a. And there's a number next to it because there's a couple different ways of defining groups. In this class, we'll be using the 1 and 2As all the way through 8A, and then 3B, I mean, sorry, 1B all the way through 8B. Let's move to the next slide. Now I've inserted the actual element symbol and name. And last, I've inserted the atomic weight of each element. Now let's talk about how the elements are grouped. It can be a little bit confusing to see how they're grouped, but once you understand, you should just be able to use the periodic table of elements for a reference versus trying to memorize everything. So first, we'll take a look at the representative elements, and that's groups 1 through 8a, which is in the reddish color here. These are the most common elements on Earth in the universe everywhere. Next are the transitional elements, which are these elements here, and then the inner transitional elements, which are also called transitional elements. And you have the lanthanides and the actinides. If you notice, these elements here actually fit into this space here where this box is. We won't dwell too much on these elements, but uh, I thought I'd point them out. And then over here in white are the elements 
that the names and some of the properties of these elements are still under review. And that's what this note here says. One of the major divisions of elements is the metals versus the nonmetals. This is a very important concept to grasp. Right here in the bottom, uh, this little gray line here in the key it says metals, nonmetals, separation. Here's this little zigzag line that's on all your peri periodic tables. Everything to the left of it is a metal. Everything to the right of it is a nonmetal. In the green here are metalloids, which are kind of in between. Note that hydrogen is often on this side of the periodic table as well as this side, and I put it right above fluorine right here. Hydrogen is a non-metal, and it's one of the exceptions you should just note for the table. But if you take a look at the color key, you'll see that it does not look blue and it is yellow, so it belongs with the non-metals. Next, we have the groups. The groups are very important in this class, and the groups are associated with physical properties of the elements. The first group we'll talk about is group 1A, which is here on the top, 1A. All these purple elements here are considered alkali metals. They have very special properties. The reason the periodic table of elements is arranged how it's arranged is to allow you to view elements and see properties about the elements at a glance. All of these elements here, the alkali metals, are very reactive, and you can read about some of the other properties in your book. And they also all have typically one electron in their valence shell. And we'll talk about valence shells a little bit later. Another very important group is over here in the reddish color, which is the noble gases. That's group 8A. You should recognize these right away. Uh, these have eight electrons in their outer shell or valence shell. And they're very stable elements. These are found, uh, some of them very abundantly. Whereas these over here, uh, lithium, sodium, are normally never found in their uh, single state. They normally react with some other element. The halogens are group 7A, which are an orange here. And then in this slate blue, we have the alkaline earth metals. Note that this information is right here in the chart or the table, and you should be able to easily access it. The transitional elements are here in blue. And then these ones here in green we'll talk about a bit more, but they have no common names. So groups three through six A have no common names. And finally, we're at the table that I prefer you to use. If you can't print in color, I have another option coming up here in a moment. The table lies out, lays out um, the various groups, the alkali metals in purple, alkaline metals, and it's kind of a slate color. And then you have your transition elements, your lanthanides in the lighter blue, your actinides in even a lighter blue, and then your poor metals. They're still metals, kind of in a slate blue. Your book doesn't really talk much about them. They're still considered a metal. Then you have your metalloids in green, which your book mentions, along with this nice line right here, which separates the metals on the left from the non-metals on the right. You have the other non-metals in yellow, halogens, and then noble gases. And of course, hydrogen is considered a non-metal. So all of these are non-metals, and they have certain types of reactions associated with them with the metals. For this element hydrogen, there's a little asterisk here. The new way to consider uh, the atomic weight is, is actually a range that's been adopted. And this is this range, that's all that means. It's nothing you have to know. But it's based on the weighted average of all the elements found. In some areas of the country, hydrogen has different 
has a different atomic weight than other areas, and it ranges from this value to this value. That's just for information's sake. And it's easy to find hydrogen on the periodic tables. Number one, easy to place it. It's a nonmetal, and there you are. Next, let's look at lithium and neon right away. Lithium, if you look at it, three it means it has three protons. Neon has 10 protons. The atomic weight is 6.940 for lithium. And for neon, it's 20.18. Note that these numbers here have four significant, significant figures throughout the table. These are measured values, so they're inexact. These are not exact values. And every single time you do a calculation and you pull the number off the periodic table, it will have four significant figures. And there's the lithium and neon easily placed. Uh, if you look at lithium, you count one, two, three. It's the third element. And you count all the way up to 10, and you arrive at neon, which is the 10th element, 10 protons. And here's some other examples. Uh, even without any information here, you can easily locate where copper is. It's element number 29. Where chlorine is, it's number 17. You go 10 here plus another 7 across, and similar for copper. And then lithium, potassium, and sodium are all alkali metals. And because they're all grouped together vertically in a group, they have similar properties. Here's our final table, exactly where we started from. You can print this and have it available for the class, or you can have it available on your desktop, whatever is most convenient. If you don't have a color printer, simply print this one. It's in Sakai. And then use a felt pen or a highlighter, and you can color in uh, the various groups and have this available handy. And instead of trying to memorize things again, just reference the information. Thank you for watching this screencast.